What's up guys, I'm gonna do something I normally don't do today and that's show you the completed guitar first and then post all the build videos second. This is a mango and palm wood guitar I've been working on for probably the last six weeks. It's environmentally friendly. These are both plantation grown woods and I said I was gonna do something this year that I wanted to do and it's this guitar. I purchased this piece of mango I don't know, 15 years ago, and I've been sitting on it, and it moved with me to Nashville and back, and I'm staring at it, and one day I noticed all the different coloring in it, and I was like, wow, that's gonna make a pretty cool guitar. It's finished in true oil, no stain, and it looks outstanding. The figure in here is probably one of the neatest pieces of wood I've ever seen. It's got so much color. Um, it's got yellows and browns and blacks and streaks running through this. And it's just a neat looking piece of wood. It's a set neck at a four degree neck angle. I've got EMG pickups. I actually got a donor guitar that I bought for another project. It had its headstock cracked off and had some EMGs. And I was like, that looks like this should be it. And I built this a little bit differently. I saw a Crimson guitar video where he was using sort of this fanned wood uh, guitar where he put some tension in the wood. And I said, I'm gonna do that. I didn't think I'd get enough of this body to make a full solid body. So what I did is I ran these strips through and made like a hollow body explorer. And this shape I thought really worked well for that concept. And then the other cool thing I did is I put a little bit of tension in the top and I bent this top piece down. So you can see it's a little bit thinner here. This is a massive guitar in terms of overall length. With the headstock in this, that wing is just a really huge guitar. I used a palm wood fretboard. I've been sitting on that fretboard for a while and it's really cool, but it is a huge pain in the butt to work with. It's splinters and as I was doing some routing, I got some tear out in a couple of spots. This is palm wood and as it breaks, it splinters and you can see how it breaks like that. And this started happening all over the body. It started happening on the headstock and on the neck as I was working on it. You can see here on the top, it started to just sort of chip out here and there, which was really disappointing. So I didn't actually end up leveling the frets. I rolled the fretboard and I got the frets level, but I didn't want to level the fret yet. I wanted to see over time with string tension, if this was gonna move at all, uh, in terms of pushing the fret back up. I used super glue and stainless steel frets, but I was really uh, concerned that maybe under tension this would act weird. I did use a little bit of acetone to wipe the back. When I glued this on, you'll see that in the video, gets that oil out of the wood and it gets the glue to adhere better. I figured since I was using wood glue, if I pulled the oil out, that glue would seep in and make this stronger and I think that's the case but I just want to make sure really great looking guitar I put a volute on here just needed the strength this mango had all different types of grain running through it and I was uh, had a little bit of tear out had some concern on it as I was doing some of the shaping uh, I thought I would do a one piece neck or at least just one piece of wood and as I was sort of cutting and narrowing it down I realized I needed to add this palm wood strip. And then I'm a moron and drilled the uh, backs of these ratio tuners out the wrong way. So I was gonna fill them, but I couldn't find the right uh, bit to create some strips. So I may do that in the future, but we all do stupid mistakes and this is one of them. I just was so angry, but that's, that's what happens. So dumb mistake on my part. But the palm wood is really cool. It's really hard, lots of silica in it. Palm wood's actually a grass. And like I said, it grows sort of on top of each other. And that's why you see this as it pulls apart, it's just got these sort of strips. So really cool guitar. It's light, it's resonant, plays awesome. The setup actually right off the bat is pretty good. I don't really have uh, too much fretting out four degree angle and I, in this video I build a ramp to cut the body and then I've got a special jig in the corner to then cut the neck. I'll probably do another video on that to show you guys. But what I wanna do is 
show you the guitar body, let you guys watch the videos, and then I'll post some of the follow-ups from that after you guys see the whole video. So it's a pretty cool, awesome body. I used uh, True Oil, of course, to finish this. I did six coats. I sanded the first two coats down to fill the pores. This is a really open poured guitar. And what was nice is when I did that, I filled up a lot of the pores. So it's actually got a pretty nice smooth finish. I'm not gonna buff this. I just don't think it looks right. Overall, I'm really excited about how this plays and it feels. It's got that nice beefy neck. Used that one inch router bit to round this over and then cleaned up uh, the heels. And just a really cool guitar body. This one is for me. I've always wanted an Explorer. I bought the templates years ago and just never got to it. So give you a little bit of a sound clip here and then the videos are gonna come each day. We'll give you a sound clip here. I'm going to post the video, the follow-up videos each day this week. So there'll be five videos this week for you guys to watch. We'll give you a clip here. This is the neck. Here's the bridge. See that fret needs a little bit of work. awesome light lively guitar you'll see a video each day this week of this guitar thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video